गजाननम भूत गणाति से कपित्त जम्पू फल सार्पकृत उमासुत शोक विनाश कारण नमा विघ्नेश्वर पाद पंकज गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णो गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मताचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा वसुदेव सुतम देव कंस छाणूर मर्दनम देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु सर्वंगलमांगल्ये शिव सर्वाथ साधि शरण्ये त्रयंबके गौरी नारायणी नमोस्तुते ओं श्रीमात्रे नम ओं श्री अन्नधाय नम ओं श्री वसुधाय नम ओं श्री सचाम्र रणी सव्य दक्षिण सेताय नम ओं श्री कटाक्षकंकूतकमलाकोटिसेताय नम ओं श्री शिवशक्ताकिण्य नम ओं श्री ललितांबिकाय नम ओं श्री 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 शातानंदवदूत सद्गुरव नम ओं शक्ति ओं शक्ति ओं पराशक्ति ओं शक्ति ओं शक्ति ओं ओं शक्ति ओं शक्ति ओं पराशक्ति ओं शक्ति ओं शक्ति ओं ओं शक्ति ओं शक्ति ओं पराशक्ति ओं शक्ति ओं शक्ति ओं ओं शक्ति ओं शक्ति ओं पराशक्ति ओं शक्ति ओं शक्ति ओं नम पार्वती पत हर हर महादेवा नमस्कार टू ऑल वेलकम टू सेशन 15 इन द सीरीज ऑफ ललिता सहस्रनाम अंडर द वंदे विद्याशंकर प्रोग्राम ऑफ एस पी बी एफ नॉर्थ we have actually completed 14 sessions so far more than one year and we continue today with the session 15 i hope you all enjoyed the celebrations of gokul ashtami and krishna jayanti and today happens to be the world senior citizens day our sanatana dharma always respected elders but now it seems the west has formalized it into a day when we recognize the contributions of senior citizens and we express our gratitude to them so greetings to all elders wishing them a happy senior citizens day well i want to begin really with a question somebody asked me recently we recite dalita sasanam regularly why should we really listen to the meanings and commentary i was thinking about it and uh, let me try to answer this question you know our ancient puranas including lalita sahasranamam which is the part of brahmanda purana they actually intended to explain the vedic doctrines but what happens today in these days of scarce time and rat race and materialistic pursuits most people tend to be very casual and they are not seriously seriously interested in vedic doctrines or spiritual development so they asked this question what's in it for me if i say that the sasanama will get become prosperous let me tell you why we should listen to the meanings and commentary i'm just going to give you a couple of uh, reasons one of course uh, the reading is very good chanting is very good they do it in public now but understanding the meanings of the names makes it a lot more enjoyable it's like listening to a cricket commentary while watching the game you enjoy it more two is lalita sasnam is called the ragasya nama sakasra you know the thousand secret names and as i mentioned every verse is mantra and every nama is loaded with lot of powerful inner meanings if you look at the meanings you will understand the concept of shakti as a form of brahman it will help you in better understanding of sanatana dharma and eventually it will lead you to spiritual development or awakening of your mind to many new things that you were totally unaware of before for example you will gain a much better understanding of yoga it is just not a set of physical postures or exercises as it is made out in the west it's much more 
to deal with controlling the mind. Yuji is to connect. Yoga comes from that. And you will also learn a lot more about the ancient heritage. And three, Bhaskaraya, he explains his cryptic inner meanings with comparison to other Puranas like Upanishads and then Bhagavad Gita. All that, you know, there is a comparison. There are different interpretations given. So, Lalita Sasanama in essence contains a theory of the universe. Bhaskaraya provides a great deal of information covering various disciplines, you know, such as science, yoga, technology, management, arts, humanities, and spirituality, of course. That's a great gift to us, isn't it? It will improve your skills in dealing with a variety of situations in life. That's the art of living. And number four, above all, you will get a, a better understanding on the beauty of Sanskrit. I keep explaining it on many occasions on how beautiful the language is. So, what is needed is really an open mind and uh, a quest for learning. So, that is all what is needed and that uh, you get uh, all these benefits. There are many more, but I am not listing them. But principally, these four benefits you get uh, by listening to these kind of uh, lectures. That's why people go and listen to many Swamiji's coming, Chinma Mission and other people. Every time the Sankaracharyas, any of them, from Singeri or uh, Kanchi or anywhere else, when they speak, you learn something new because they always get an exposure which is different and we are able to get something learning from them. So it's a question of getting more knowledge. Okay. Now let's come to our session now. In our last session, 14, we completed uh, up to Slokam 144 and Nama 749. And today, after the Dhyana Slogam, we'll begin with uh, Slogam 145 and Nama 750. Vasal, Vasal Dhyana Slogam, Sindhura Arana Vikraham, Trinayanam, Manikka Maudi Spurata, Tara Naika Sekaram, Smita Mukim, Apina Vakshorukam, Hanibyam, Malipurna Rathasasakam, Rakthot, Palambi Pratim, Saumyam Ratna Gadatha Rakta Charanam, Jayet Parabambikam, Arunam, Karuna, Tarankita, Kim, Tisapasa, Uncle Japutpa, Parna, Chapam, Animad, Viravurta, Mayuka, Rakamate, Bavi, Bavanim, Jaye, Padma, Sanastam, because the Vadanam, Padma, Patraya, Dakshim, He, Babam, Peter, Bastram, Karakali, Lasat, Satapim, Padma, Barangim, Tarbalan, Karyuktam, Satamavetam, Bakanam, Ram, Bavanim, Sri Vidyam Chantamurtim Sakala Surunatam Sarvasam Patpradatrim Sa Kunkuma Vilepna Balikucham Bikasturikam Savantahasi Vetanam Sasarachapa Pasha Ankusham Asesh Jana Mohini Marunam Malya Pusham Param Japa Kusuma Basuram Bhavyo Tare Ambikam We'll start with Slokam 145 and then as usual I'll uh, Give the explanation for each uh, Nama. Maheshwari Mahakali Mahagrasa Mahasana Aparna Chantika Chanta Munda Suranishudini. We start with Maheshwari, the great goddess. Devi is the spouse of Maheshwara. Maha means great, like in Mahavishnu or Mahalakshmi. So Maheshwara, his spouse is Maheshwari. Maheshwari is also one among the seven Saptamatrikas. Brahmani, Vaishnavi, Maheshwari, Indrani, Kaumari, Varahi, and Chamunda or Narasimha. So she takes her name from Lord Shiva. And she is believed to have been born from the body of Lord Shiva. She is armed with the same kind of weapons that Shiva has got. And uh, the symbol and characters of Shiva also. If you see the picture on the left side, you see she is uh, depicted as Varada by Astadarim. 
having four arms, one arm Varada Mudra, which is granting wishes, and then one Abhaya Mudra, the right hand is Abhaya Mudra, protection. The other two arms, you see, one is holding the Shula, the, the trident, and uh, uh, Damaru on the other hand, on the right hand. And the Vahanam she has is uh, Bull, Rashabam. So it is almost same as Shiva, and therefore she is uh, uh, a part of Maheshwara. That's why she is called Maheshwari. The next Nama is Maha Kali. Maha is again great. Kali means typically she who is black. Kala in Indian Marathi also means black, you know. Kali means also goddess of time, like Kalam, goddess of time or fate. She is called great because she rules over even death. So Devi is uh, referred to as Mahakali, Bhadrakali, and Kalika. Kali is considered as a ferocious form of Devi. You know, the very name Kali induces some kind of a fear in our mind. She has got a figure with popping eyes, a necklace of skulls, and protruding red tongue, and armed with weapons. Some of them you can see on the picture on the right side. But Ma Kali is also mother goddess who destroyed the evil Asuras and being a dark colored goddess, she is seen as Kali and also a great power of time or Kala. We will see quickly how she is described in various scriptures and how her greatness was realized by many devotees even in the recent centuries. How did Kali appear first? There is a legend to it. It is said that Kali emerged first from Shiva. At one time, the Devas were harassed and they were attacked also by an Asura called Daruka. Nobody could destroy him because he got a boon from Brahma which prevented anybody to kill him but he forgot to include a woman. So, it would allow only a female to kill him because he thought that there is no woman who can challenge him. Therefore, he forgot to include a woman. Except a woman, nobody else could kill him. So, Parvati merges with Shiva's body, reappearing as Kali to defeat Daruka. So, Bhaskar Raya actually quotes Linka Purana, chapter 106. He says, I am quoting him, Having entered the body of the Lord of Devas, who is Shiva, Parvati made her own body out of poison from the wreck of Shiva. And Shiva created Kali, the dark necked goddess. With matted hair, one pulled out from, the, from his hair, from his third eye. On seeing Kali, she resembled fire and whose black neck was with poison. Even Devas, including Brahma, Vishnu, Nyantra, they ran away due to fear. So that is the kind of fearful appearance that came out of Shiva's body. So in Devi Mahatmyam, chapter 7, uh, two verses, verses 5 and 6, they describe the emergence of Kali and how the Asuras, Chanda and Munda were killed. On seeing their armies, they become very angry. So, the verse, let's say 5 and 6, I am going to read it all for you. Tatakopam chakorachayir Abhikatan Arin Prati Kope Nachasya Vadanam Mashi Varnam Abutada Prakuti Kutilastasya 
ललाट फलकाधृत काली कराल वदना विनिष्क्रांता सिपाशिनी तत कोपम चक्रोचैर चक्रोचैर अंबिका तान अरिंत Ambika becomes very angry. Kopam, even in Tamil you say Kopam, right? So it's a Sanskrit word. Kopam is angry with those enemies, and because of that, her face became dark. Mashi varnam. In Tamil, mashi is called ink. In olden days, when we were using ink, you know, ink pen, they used to call mashi the Sanskrit word. So it became dark as mashi varnam. And from the surface of her forehead, suddenly Kali Karala Vadana leapt out with a sword and a noose. Kali Karala Vadana. So this word Kali is used repeatedly. If you find Devi Maharani chapters seven, eight, and nine, word Kali is used. In chapter twelve, the Palasruti part of Devi Maharani. There is more description of the form of Mahakali. It appears in uh, verse thirty-eight, and uh, I'm going to read this out. The Vyaptam Tayeta Sakalam Brahmanam Manujeshwara Mahakalya Mahakale Mahabari Swarupaya. Actually, this is told by the Rishi. Sumedas to the king Surada, who came to seek his advice. So the Rishi tells him, "Your Majesty, Vyaptam Tayesh Sakalam Brahmanam Manujeshwara. The whole universe is pervaded by Mahakali, who appears in the form of Mahamari Surupaya, Mahamari, the Samharani." The time of Mahakala or Pralayam. In fact, this word Maha, this uh, Mahabari is used very frequently. It is also meaning catastrophe, like uh, you had the COVID nineteen, and Prime Minister Modi ji always uses the word Mahabari to describe COVID nineteen. The next verse thirty nine uses the word Kala. It twice. And you can read his explanation of Mahakali. She who destroys at the appropriate time, and also creates and sustains at the appropriate time, is called the great power of time. Saiva kale mahamari, saiva srishti bhavatyaja, sitim karoti bhuta nam, saiva kale sanatani. It is she who is the Mahamari, the great catastrophe. Pralaya kale. It is she, the birthless one, who does not have any birth. One who creates. Sitim karoti. She is one who maintains life. Bhuta nam saiva of all beings in its time. So, this is another definition of uh, kali given in Devi Mahatmya. But uh, there is a question. Parvati is addressed as Gauri, you know. Gauri, Gauri means uh, white, fair one, and she is also Kali, the dark one. Is not a contradiction. There are two opposite colors, white and black. They actually represent the two opposing nature of the Devi. Parvati is also the goddess of love or Kamakshi. So. There she is, Gauri. In times of danger, she can become very fierce and angry, like Kali. Then it is black. Kanchi Mahapariva says, Shiva gets into the task of Samvara after taking black-colored Parvati as Shakti. When we refer to Ammal as Samhara Murti, we call her as Kali. Comes in David in chapter one. In India, there is a you must have heard there is a very famous uh, Mahakalishwar temple, one of the twelve Jyoti Lingas in Ujjain, Madhya Pradesh. And the Devi there is Mahakali. Some people also call her as Harasiddhi Mata. 
So this Mahakali was worshipped by the great king Vikramaditya. Just imagine how old it is. It's also a chetra where Kalidasa, who was an illiterate, gained wisdom by the grace of Mahakali. Talking about Kalidasa, there is a very interesting story how, how he became a Mahakali. He was actually a foolish shepherd who eventually became a great poet by the grace of Mahakali. The story goes that, uh, you know, uh, some jealous minister wanted to humiliate the princess with Jyotama. So he, they brought him and said, he's a great man, but he doesn't talk. So you can marry him. So the princess with Jyotama, she tested him with just signs, you know. So she raised her index finger and said this. And then quickly Kalidasa showed like these two fingers. Actually, she raised one index finger to mean God is one, there is no second. But Kalidasa, when she said two, she interpreted Kalidasa's answer is one is Paramatma, the Supreme God, and the other is Jivatma. See her, her own uh, interpretation. So further, she said, five, she showed five fingers to indicate there are five senses. And Kalidasa thought she was about to slap him or something and he showed the fist, you know, fist like this, you know. At this time, the princess Vidyodama thought, he, what he means is controlling his senses is most important. Therefore, he holds all the five fingers and this only uh, will lead to ultimate happiness. So, she was quite surprised by his wisdom and she agreed to marry him. But later, she found out that he was a fool. And he drove him out in the middle of the night. So Kalidas went inside a nearby temple, it's a Kali temple, and he prayed to Kali to grant him wisdom. And Kali wrote on his tongue and instantly became a Mahakavi. Kalidasa means Kali servant, no? great, quiet, he wrote many things. His very first prayer was Shadamagam. You must have heard it. Panikavina Mupalalayanti Madalasam Manjulavag Bilasam. It goes very beautiful. Tatakam is a form of prose. And he wrote many great dramas, you know, like Sakuntalam, Raghuvamsam, Kumara Sambhavam, Vega Sandesham, and so on. And he became one of these Navaratnas, nine jewels, the court of King. So that's the story of how Kali Asa became great by the grace of Kali. But in recent times, you have seen the, the past 150 or 250 years, Ramakrishna Paramsa, Swami Vivekananda, Ram Prasad Sen, all from Bengal, because Bengal is full of Saktas, they are some of the legendary devotees of Kali. And they actually demonstrated the spiritual realizations from Kali. So all these stories I'm telling you because you can see how greatness is achieved with the grace of Devi. So it's an inspiration for us to worship Devi and to ward off fear. Durga Samsasati says, you know, Om Sarva Swarupe Sarve Se Sarva Shakti Saman Bite Baye Bastra Hino Devi Durge Devi Namo Sute you know, you can ward off fear by reciting this Durga Sapsati. So, Kali is not all that fearful. She is fearful only to enemies. But she is a blessing for people who worship her. The next uh, word is Mahagrasa. This is Nama 752. Mahagrasa means the great devourer, the great eater. Have the Brahma Sutram, it's quoted by Maskar Raya. Om Atta Chara Chara Grahanath, it comes in chapter 1. Atta means the eater. Chara Achara Grahanath, Chara means movable. Achara is opposite, immovable. The movable and immovable Grahanath, if both are taken as food, by whom? Who can be the eater of such a 
a great universe as such. Only Brahman can be alone and no one else. Brahma Sutram says it is a Brahman. He is the Supreme Lord. So this Nama, I know, it refers to the great uh, dissolution when everything is devoured by Ambal, who is Maha Samharini. That's why called Mahagrasa. And Mahasana is the next uh, Nama 753. They actually add on to the previous Nama. A Mahat because it is consuming both the animate as well as inanimate things. And Ashana is to eat. Maha Ashana means a great eater who eats everything. Both animate as well as inanimate. Possibly this uh, earlier Nama refers to the Pralaya. And this particular Nama refers to the capability of Devi to consume everything as a great devourer. You will find uh, the Devi's glory described in detail in you know, Shakta Upanishad. She is not only the principle of creation, she is also the principle of auspiciousness, the principle of cosmic energy, principle of austerity. Tapasi Jwalanti of destruction too. She is also the principle of divine knowledge. She is Jada Shakti and also Chit Shakti. So that is Mahasana. In addition, you have the glory of her capabilities in other matters. Chandrika, oh no, sorry, Aparna. That's the next name, Nama. Now, Aparna, there are different interpretations. Bhaskaraya says apa means removing and runa is debt. Aparna means without debts. Devi does not owe anything to anybody. So that is one interpretation. Parna in Sanskrit also means leaf. Aparna is just the opposite, which means no leaf. What does it mean with no leaf? The Kalika Purana says, Devi, when she was doing penance, the tapas, she renounced eating even the leaves, you know, as food. So she got the name as Aparna, no leaf. It is repeated in Brahmanda Purana also. There is a very, another interesting story, which uh, I think Mahapariva said once. There is a Lord Shiva in Suchindram, near Nagarkoil, in South India. The Lord Shiva there is called Stanu Murti, also Stanu Malayam. What does Stanu mean? Stanu means still, you know, it's something that appears like a dead wood, but still has life in it. Now, Ambal is so close to Ishwara that she was actually entwining Shiva as a creeper, as a very tender creeper, she was around with leaves. But when she looked at uh, Sardu Murti, which was kind of still without any life in it, she said, why should I alone be glamorous with nice leaves and all? So I am going to shed all the leaves. So she shed all her leaves and became a creeper without leaves. So she is called Aparma. Another beautiful interpretation. Of Aparna. Next Nama is Chantika. What is the name of Chandi? Chant actually means in Sanskrit tearing apart. You know, in Tamil we say Shandai, right? I think it has come from this word. They are tearing their hair apart. So the probably the word Chandai has come from this uh, Sanskrit word Chant. So, the goddess Chanti is one who tears apart. And who does it? When somebody is angry. So, Ambal becomes angry at her enemies. So, Devi Mahatmyam is a part of Markande Purana. It's also called Durga Sapsasati and Chandi Path. It is popularly known as Chanti because it is describing the glory of Chantika. Chantika means a terrible like God Rudra. The goddess uh, has uh, two forms. One is benevolent, 
and the other one is benevolent. So in her terrible form, she destroys all the evil demons. The benevolent form, she's in the mother of universe. So the recitation of Chanti Path, you know, is guiding the reader into the presence of Chanti, the Divine Mother, in such a way that it will settle down all the conflict in his mind. The mind is tearing apart. So that mind which is tearing apart, it will settle down and return to peace. So that is also another interpretation. And she is the source of all forms of goddesses with different mood brings different forms of incarnation. So this is Chantika, which is derived from the word Chant, who tears apart. There is also another meaning, according to Devi Bhagavan, Bhaskar Raya cites this, that a girl of seven years is called Chantika. That is the name given. Going further, the last word in this, Chanta Munda Sura Nishudini. Everybody knows Devi, she destroyed Chanda and Munda, the two demons. So she was called as Chamundeshwari. In Markande Puranam, you have this. Esma Chandam Cha Mundam Cha Grihitva Tumupakata. Chamunde di tato loke, Kyata devi babishasi. The smart chantam cha mundam cha grihitva, Tumupagata. Because you captured chanta and munda, Chamunde iti, Tate loke, Kyata devi babishasi. You shall be called as Chamunde. Chamunda is the name also of the Saptamata. We saw that earlier. So that is the uh, uh, greatness about this Chamundeshwari and uh, to uh, she is angered by Chanda and Munda who eventually got destroyed. So Devi Mahatyam also identifies Chamunda as uh, Kali. As per Devi Mahatyam, Chamunda emerges Chandika from the eyebrows of Kaushiki goddess. She was assigned the task of eliminating or killing the demon Chanda and Munda, who were the army generals of Subba Nishumba. So she fought a fierce battle, battle with these demons, ultimately killing them. So that is how it is identified as uh, Kali in Devi Mahatmyam. The second portion of Devi Mahatmya is most popular because it is describing the destruction of Mahisha. Mahisha is a buffalo, demon. And Durga, she kills demon Mahishasura. So the name Mysur, Mysuru, is derived from Mahishuru, Mahishuru, Mahisha, the place of Mahisha who was described by goddess Chamunda. The famous Chamundeshwari temple is on Chamundi hill in Mysore. So there is also another interpretation from Varaha Purana, the sloka, how Devi got the name Chamunda. Devi cha trishi kena jau tam daitam samata adayat tayatu taadayasta syasya daityasa subalochane charma munde upe samyak pratar you know, there was an Asura, a Daitya king called Ruru. Are you, are you Ruru? Ruru Rastu Dana Vendrasya. Devi pierced him with a Sulaidam. Whereby Charma Munde Chana Adyadaha. The head, you know, Mundam and the body, Charmam, they got parted. So she actually took away the two body part. Abahrityat Hara Devi Chamunda Tenasa Abhavati. She took away the two body parts, Charma Munda. So she got the name Chamunda and also called Chamundeshwari. 
So that is another interpretation from Baraha Purana. It is a beautiful song. Uh, some of you must have heard. I am sure uh, uh, Meenak Chundram has heard this song. It is by Hari Krishna Naldur Muttaya Bhagavatar. He uh, composed a nice song in Chamundeshwari. In uh, Raga, it's a Hindustani Raga adapted. It's called Gauda Malhar. Sarasamoki Sakala Bagate Sarasamoki Sakala Bagate Chamundeshwari Sarasamoki Sakala Bagate Chamundeshwari Sarasamoki Sakala Bhagyate Marajanaka Shodari Marajanaka Shodari Makisha Sura Bhatini Marajanaka Shodari Makisha Sura Bhatini Sarasamuki Sakala A beautiful song. Sarasa Mukhi. Sarasa means lotus. Lotus faced one. Sakala Bhagyate. You give me all prosperity. Sri Chamundeshwari. Mara Janaka Sodari. Mahavishnu's sister. Mahishasura Mardani. So this is a praise of Chamundeshwari and Mahishasura Mardani. So it's a beautiful song and it speaks of the glory of Chamundeshwari. Okay, let's go to the next verse. 146. Chara Charatmika Sarva Lokeshi Vishvadharini Trivargadatri Subhaga Trayambhaga Trigunatmika Chara Charatmika Chara Akshara Charam means perishable. Chayam, charam, all means perishable. Opposite aksharam, which means imperishable. So it means uh, syllables also, which we talked about aksharam. The Varaha Purana says, Devi is all syllable, yet she is called one syllable, as she is the ruler of the universe. We have seen before that Devi is in the form of alphabets and words. He explained it before. She is Sabda Brahman. Every word in Adita Sasnama is a mantra. Devi Upanishad says, Mantra Nam Matrika Devi Sabda Nam Jnana Rupini. She is in the form of Matrikas in mantras and in the form of Jnana in sound. Sabda Nam Jnana Rupini. In fact, Nama 577. If you remember, says Matrika Varna Rupini. Matrika means source or origin. So, in this context, you know, it uh, means alphabets. Uh, the realization of Matrika, it means liberation to the soul. Soul realizes Matrika by means of mantra. The origin of this is Matrika or Sanskrit letters from Ye to Cha. From Ye to Cha, that's why it's called Aksharam. Ye to Cha. And Bhaskara is also quoting Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15, sloka 16, where Sri Krishna says, Dvavimo purusha loke chara achara yevacha chara sarvani bhutani kutasto achara uchyate. So Krishna here says there are two kinds of beings. The chara, which is perishable, akshara, imperishable. So all beings in the material realm are eternal. In the material realm, maya bounds, kind of binds the individual soul to a material body. From the tiny insect to even devas, all the embodied divinities are perishable in this world. 
they have to go through repetitive cycle of birth and death punarapi jananam punarapi maranam whereas the akshara imperishable which is a soul possesses an immortal body which is free from the cycle of birth and death they reside forever in the divine realm where is the abode of god so shara refers to the body and akshara refers to the soul being and non being sat and asat are also called shara and akshara in fact if you remember vishnu sahasranamam there is a slogan dharma go dharma go dharme sah satarakshanam avijnata sahasram tu vidata kritalakshanah dharma go dharma dharmi अक्षरम अक्षरम अविज्ञाता सहस्रांसु विदाता कृतलक्षण सत् हियर मीन वॉट इज ट्रू पर ब्रह्म हू इज अ ट्रूथ द वर्ड सत्यम कम फ्रम सत् ऑल नो इंडिया नाशनल मोटो इज सत्यमे जायते ट्रूथ अलोन ट्रयम्स फ्रम मुंडक उपनिषद नो देंट्रल लिमेंट उपनिषद इज द रियालीटी brahman brahman who is the nature of sat chit and ananda sat is to chit is consciousness and ananda is bliss asat is opposite which is hidden not having reality charam all being subject to change aksharam the changeless one so the charam and chara aksharam both have opposite meanings and they are described in all these kind of puranas including uttarasanam next uh, nama is sarva lokeshi sarva lokeshi he is a ruler of all worlds you know there are seven worlds god bhur bhuva swaha mahar janar tapas satya gayatri mantram you see bhur bhuva swaha mahar janar tapas satya seven seven worlds she is a ruler of all these seven worlds that's why called sarveshwari Vishwadharini, Vishwadharini, she is supporter, holder of the universe. Three varga dhatri, three varga, three varga means three purusharthas. You know, dharma artha kava moksham, aram porul inbam budu. They call in Tamil. She is a giver of three of them. What is dharma artha? and kama of course she gives moksha also but it is not included here here it is only three varga dharma artha kama dharma is righteousness artha is wealth or uh, a pursuit of a profession kama is desire of course so dharma artha kama moksha commonly we call it as purushartham and man thinks of living a life full of joy and plenty so she gives all that but the happiness we get is two kinds one is temporary and the other one is a permanent what is called chitran bam perin bam they call it chitran bam is what is temporary perin bam is a great joy a eternal bliss you know never leaves one once received that is, that is moksha or vid they call liberation and adi sankara jaye asserts and they go in them that this artham artham is the wealth is anartham wealth is meaningless artham anartham bhavaya nityam nasti chaleesh satyam asatyam ಪುತ್ರೀತಿಗೋವಿಂದೋವಿಂದೋವಿಂದೋಮೇ ಅರ್ಥಮನರ್ಥ ಭಾವಯ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ನಾಸ್ತಿಸು ಕಲೇಶ ಸತ್ಯ ಅಸತ್ಯ 
So wealth is really meaningless. There is no joy in it. Think about this. Reflect it. Even a rich man is afraid of his own son. This is the way wealth is everywhere. Artham here means wealth. So these are all temporary, trivial pressures. But ultimately what is the eternal one is liberation. So attaining moksha is the ultimate goal in our uh, dharma. It is irrevocable. So, the purpose of religion is to take us back to our home, moksha. So, Abba here, it says, three objects of desire, dharma, artha, kama, she gives all that. It does not mean she does not offer uh, moksha. In fact, uh, there is a nama, you remember, muktida. Muktida means once she offers liberation to those who deserve it. So, she does give muktida, but it is not for everybody. So next Nama is Subhaga. The Sanskrit word Subham, as you know, it means uh, auspicious, good luck, you know, uh, propitious, very promising. Likewise, Subhaga has several meanings. So Bhaskaraya comments some of them. One, of course, it can mean good fortune. Second, he says a girl of five years, she is called Subhaga. And Baga, means wealth, desire, strength, effort, fame. So many meanings are there. The Vishwa Purana says, uh, Bhaga means uh, wisdom, dominion, fame, strength, effort, desire, wealth, virtue, sun, salvation, everything. We have seen in one of the Namas earlier that Bhaga means sun. It means the sun is illuminated because of Ambal. She resides in the sun and causes it work. Devi is known as Kushmanda. Kushmanda is fourth aspect of Rava Durga. Ku means little. Ushma means Ushnam, you know, warmth and energy. Kushmanda means one who is having the power of creating warmth. Anda means a cosmic egg. So she is a goddess who has the power and capability to live inside the sun. So she's called Subhaga. And another thing is that uh, there is, uh, whenever there is every month the sun exists, there is the energy of Vishnu, who is composed of three Vedas. The rigs shine in the morning. The edges noon and the other portions, the salmon at the end of the day. So, the manifestation of Vishnu is threefold. As rig, as yajus, as salmon. Rig in the morning, yajus in the afternoon, noon and salmon in the evening. So, threefold energy of Vishnu exists in the sun. But it is also manifesting as three gods, Brahma, Vishnu, Rudra. Though the sun is always possessed with the energy, neither rises nor sets. The energy of Vishnu exists in the sun. It is encircled by seven troops. What is seven troops? The seven troops are Devas, Rishis, Gandharvas, Apsaras, Yakshas, Sadhyas, and Rakshasas. They are called Sapta Kiranas. You can see Surya in a cart being driven by seven horses. We also see seven rays, Sapta Kiranas, which are called Divya. So the collective meaning of the above passage is the seven troops are the causes of the sons monthly changes, but the energy it does not change. She is the foundation of all. Subhaga also means achara vastus. Achara means not having motion. Motionless things. Of what? Of eight things which are used at very auspicious occasions. 
quoted in Padma Purana. Ikshuvastaru Rajamcha Nishprava Jiratan Yake Vikravacha Gochiram Kusumbam Kusumam Tata Ravanam Chaiti Saubhagya Attakam Stavaram Ucchate Bhaskaraya quotes this uh, in English, of course. He doesn't say the Sanskrit one. I got it from the Google. Sugar cane, Ikshuvas, Taru Raja. Taru Raja means uh, Panamaram, you know, Palmyra tree. Nishpava, Jiratanyake, sprouted jira and coriander seeds. Goat shiram, the cow's milk. All his uh, transformation, including curd and butter and all that. Yellow garment, kusumba flowers, and lavanam, which is salt. So, these eight things are called acharavastus, and subhaga refers to all these eight things. And this is another interpretation. And Padma Purana says, Trivashtabhasaugamayam. Bukti Bukti Pradam Umam Aradya Subhagam Bhaktya Nari Vakhim Na Bindati What else should not one, whether a man or woman, get by worshipping Uma, Pradam Umam, Uma with devotion, who is the person giving blessing to Devas and bestower of enjoyment and salvation. Trivishtava saubhagya mayam mukti mukti pradamoma. So, what else would not, one would not get by worshipping Uma? And here it is Subhaga. Aradya Subhaga Patya. So, Subhaga is mentioned here in Padma Purana also. Going further, Triambaka. Triambaka, I think, is easy to understand. Three eyes. But Shiva has got three eyes. It's quoted in Vedas. In fact, the very first word in uh, Mahabrithunja Mantram, Triambaka Majame Kesukan Tempu Tivardhanam Urvaruko Abandhanar Mutyo Mutchiyama Murta Ati Che Triambaka, right? Triambakeshwar, you probably know. It is a uh, temple near Nasik. And the uh, Devi there is called Trembaka. It's part of Trembakeshwari. There's also a temple, Trembakeshwari temple in Karnataka. The only one I know of, it is near uh, Mysore. I think it's about 60 miles in a place called Chamarajanagar. So that is uh, Trembakeshwari. And Devi Purana, Paskaraya quotes Devi Purana, which says, the moon, the sun, and the fire are the three eyes of Devi. They are called by sages three eyes. Trayana, Brahma, Vishnu, Rudranam, Ambika, Matava. Trayana, Brahma, Vishnu, Rudranam, Ambika, Matava. Tray, Brahma, Vishnu, and Rudra. Amba is the mother of them. Mother of Brahma, Vishnu, and Rudra. So that is Trayambakam. Another definition. From Bhaskaraya. Trugunatmika, easy to understand. Three gunams, which is Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. And that is uh, a common uh, uh, understanding, is you all know that. that she is uh, having all the three qualities, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas, in equilibrium. So that's a slokam 146. You can see the picture on the right side where you have three eyes and then the picture at the bottom is really Triambakeshwari, Triambakeshwari temple. Going further, Shlokam 147 and 148, Sarka Bhavarkata Suddha Japa Putri Nibha Kritihi Ojo Vati Dudhira Yajna Rupa Priya Vrata Sarka Apavarkata Ambal Sarka is Sargam heaven. She is the bestower of Sorgam and Moksham. Sorga is heaven. Apavarga means liberation. She is the emancipation of the soul. Exempt from further migration. Also known as Moksha. So Sorgam gives a 
anitya sukham it is not permanent but moksham provides nitya sukham that is brahmanandam or bliss so it's called apavarga in sanskrit so the happiness which is not interrupted by pain or in future is called swarga now krishna in bhagavad gita chapter 9 shlokam 21 says tetam bhuktva sarvalokam vishalam chirne punde matyalokam vishanti evam tri dharma man purpanna gatagatam khama khama labante king kotar ri baskar raya after enjoying the pleasures of heaven when the stock of punya gets exhausted they have to return back to earth so those who follow the vedas who want to really desire objects of enjoyment repeatedly come and go this world and heaven and back so all uh, most of uh, vedic scriptures support this belief that uh, the happiness in moksham of salvation is an eternal one so ambal gives both swarga and heaven and liberation swarga or heaven and liberation liberate permanent bliss so that is the meaning of swarga abhavargata next is suddha suddha is very easy it's uh, pure she is pure she is free from the stains of ignorance or avidya japa pushpa nibhakriti ji is the next nama japa pushpa nibhakriti pushpa japa pushpam it means in tamil we call it as chambaruti you know the red one and uh, malayalam also chambaruti in hindi they call it as uh, i think some gudal uh, it generally in bright red color but here in us i see this in different colors so here it means japa putpa nibhakriti means a bird whose body is like the shabarati flower the other interpretation given by baskar raya is the name can be taken as two syllables syllable a before ajapa and pushpani bakriti ajapa pushpani bakriti ajapa is a mantra japa starts in vocal form ajapa just opposite it means without chanting that happens only after years of long practice and extraordinary things happen when you do ajapa the mantra without really using the vocal it kind of seeps into consciousness and automatically instinctive recitation is called ajapa without repetition japa brings attainment of certain results now ajapa is the opposite which is a continuous recitation and it is something different from japa it's also you call it as hamsa mantra you know a person when uh, uh, inhales with a sound sa rather rather Uh, inhales with sound ha and exhales with sound sa so it ha ahamsa hamsa i am he so it calls hamsa mantra repeated by everyone each day it is a ajapa japa but that is ordinary in tiruvarur lord nataraja is said to be performing ajapa nadanam in vishnu's hridayam in heart to match the rhythm of his breathing that's why when you go there the idol of sita raja is not uh, shown completely it is covered with flowers and a piece of cloth in such a way that only his face can be seen he makes sure that devotees should not mistake oh shiva is dancing over the body of vishnu so that should not be happen so they show only the face so here it is the ajapa mantra another uh, interpretation given 
by Bhaskar Raya that uh, it can mean a japa without really vocal chanting. And japa putpa nibhakriti ki. Putpa nibhakriti ki. Pushpa is, you know, uh, the flower. Japa kriti ki. When you say japam, it comes after a long practice and it flowers like a push pump. Ojovati, the next name. Ojovati means vitality. Ojas is actually a, a, a dhatu in the body which is uh, considered to be a deity. And that deity is the one which will nurture ojas which is uh, a quality of vitality, strength in the human body. Now, Ojas is created through a systematic process called Medas, Tejas, Varchas, Ayus and Ojas. So this Ojas is the one which is upholding the life of energy in the Prana. So Ojas means light, vitality, strength, radiance. And Ammal has all these qualities. She's called Ojovati. And devotees who worship Devi constantly may also expect to be recipients of such qualities, expect to be active and strong. So Ojovati is her name. Next one, Duti Dara. Duti Dara. Duti means light. You know, in the electricity board, it's called Vidyut Mantal in India and Hindi. Dyut is lightning, really. So, dhara means holding. Dyuti dhara means a light bearer. So, she is holding the light to the universe. Yajna rupa. Yajna rupa is the next one. Ambal is the form of yajna. What does yajna mean? Yajna means worship, sacrifice or offering. It is derived from yaj, which is meaning divine worship. Any activity performed to please Ambal or Shiva or any Bhagavan, it's called Yajna. Yajna also means Vishnu, according to Taitri Samhita. So scholars interpret Devi is a form of Vishnu also. So there are different uh, Yajna, Yajnas. Uh, Pancha Maha Yajna is what is uh, common. One is Brahma Yajna, which is part of daily ritual, which we do after the Madhyanika which is typically offered to devis, uh, devas, rishis and pitrus. It's a daily ritual. Deva yajna, for the pleasure of devas, like Ganapati, Homo and all that. Pitru yajna, which is uh, Tarpanam and Sradam and altar for ancestors. Bhauti yajna, is uh, feeding animals, birds and all that. And Manushya yajna, which is uh, Atiti Bhojan, uh, treating guests, Anadhanam and all that. They come. So these are five kinds of Panchamaha yajna. And uh, the great uh, sacrifice is really worshipping one's own self, Ajna Rupa, with devotion. That is Ajna Rupa. So, Ambal is the form of Ajna, and worshipping one's own self with devotion is the greatest Ajna. Priyavrata, last uh, Nama in this one, is fond of Vrata means vow, Priya means. Fond of vows. Ambal is fond of all vows which are made to any deity. She is very fond of vows. So that's why people take vows. You know, they go to the temple, they take a vow, well, I would get this, so I, I'm going to uh, say fast for 10 days or 15 days. I'm going to read Devi Mahatmyam for 9 days. All this is Vritam. Going further, the next one, 148 is Duradars, Duraradya, Duradarsha, Patali, Kusamapriya, Bhagati, Mer, Nilaya, Mandara, Kusamapriya. Dura means difficult. Dur, you say Durdasai, Duradishtam, all that, right? Means difficult. Aradya is worship. Ambal is difficult to worship. But for whom? For all the fickle minded people who do not know. What is the power of Ambal? 
many persons you know they are uh, unsettled mind incapable of proper worship actually this ankara sounds a warning said there could be majority of people for whom looking at beauty from a feminine and negative standpoint you know it might be prejudicial to their progress and spirituality so when ambal has to be worship you have to have a steady mind not fickle mind so the bottom line of this is worshiping her is very difficult without controlling mind and sense so you must have the proper mindset to worship her so duradarsha partly kusuma priya dura duradarsha is the next one which is difficult to control dura aradhya is difficult to worship duradarsha is difficult to control it is very difficult to perceive her let alone worship her you cannot perceive her so that is the greatness of a devi unless you have the steady mind partly kusuma priya partly partly is a flower you know it is uh, tamil they call this uh, padri poo uh, in english i don't know it is called i think trumpet flower uh, like shiva is fond of bilba bilba leaves devi is fond of patala patali flowers mahati mahati is greatness she is addressed as mahat mahati means it's something great so she is a great goddess meru nilaya the next name meru nilaya is residing on meru so we have already talked about meru which is uh, you know right on top of the uh, the sri chakra is called meru or maha meru and she lives on top of meru uh, which is in the center so that meru nilaya is referring to the meru which is the three dimensional form of sri chakra baskara of course gives another uh, uh, interpretation is a sri chakra has three aspects bhumi kailasa and meru and uh, bhumi is identified with eight deities when it is matrgalatas and kailasa and meru it when it is with 16 nitya deities meru nilaya means she divide she abides in the with with 16 nitya deities so the mode of meditation is given threefold the three samvida sanat kumara sanandana and vasishta so bhumi kailasa and meru are the three aspects connected with sri chakra and she is in the meru nilaya and she is identified with 16 with the deities so that is another interpretation given by baskar raya the next one we go to mandara kusuma priya she is fond of mandara flowers mandara trees actually is supposed to be in devaloka i haven't seen one here devadaru they call it mandara kusuma priya going further i think we have got just two verses left out so 149 is verse vira radya virat roopa viraja vishvato mukhi pratyek roopa par akasha pranada prana roopini vira vira radya vira means bravery and vira means warriors she is very was worshiped by warriors what type of warriors not those who carry weapons by guns or anything like that but by brave devotees so the characteristics of veera is also given as one who enjoys the self brings about destruction of egoism what is opposed to the self that is duality i am different god 
we believe in advaitam such people are considered as brave so abbal loves the worshiping of people from such veera so veera aradhya virat rupa she is in the form of virat which is a cosmic whole this practically covers the entire universe she is in the form of virat rupa she is in the form of the entire universe viraja we means here without and rajas means impurity she is without impurity other meaning could be that she is without any passion without blemish viraja is also a presiding deity at a place called utkal kshetra and uh, bhaskara is quoting brahmanda purana it says at viraja the goddess is viraja established by brahma and by having her darshan a mortal purifies as far as seven generations so that is what he is quoting at viraja where the presiding deity utkal kshetra going further vishvato mukhi vishvato mukhi facing all all over facing every way faces all directions having eyes and mouths on all sides so she is present everywhere omnipresent and she can manifest anywhere with eyes mouth and head everywhere pratyak rupa the next one is 781 which is interior pratyak means going inwards pratyak rupa tending inwards bahir bhukatva paran bhukatva inward direction towards the self is antar bhukatva so she is bahir bhukatva as well as antar bhukatva here it means antar bhukatva she is tending inwards devi is visible only to see who see inwardly she can be realized only from within what we call it a self realization which is the core of sanatana dharma every being is divine and experienced people say to attain god don't look outside don't look within inside because ambar resides in the mind so you have to only find find her so it is pratyak krupa para kasa para is supreme like parameshwaram akasha is ether the supreme ether because she is without any quality she is a para brahmam para brahman is para kasha the next one is pranada 783 the giver of life pranan means life pranada means one who gives life so she is the one who gives the life prana rupini she is in the form of life itself prana rupini it's called something that abbal is the inside so she is the one who is also giving you the love prana here means brahman also prana is brahman kha is brahman eeta is brahman pranada prana rupani the last verse for this day is marthanda bhairava aradhya marthanda worship by marthanda bhairava who is marthanda bhairava marthanda means the sun the skanda puranam is being quoted by bhaskar raya because he was born from mrta anda called martha anda inertic mrta anda bhairava means vatuka padma purana says the son after worshiping daily devi he obtained his lofty position so martha anda bhairava aradhya so worship by bhairava the kalika purana is describing in length but it means worshiped by sun martha bhairava bhairava 
according to Shiva Sutra, effort is also called Bhairava. It is Martanda who destroys the darkness of confusion. So, Devi is to be attained by the raising sun-like effort, which is called Bhairava, Martanda Bhairava. But the king of Pudukote is called uh, Martanda. The surname is Martanda. Going further, Mantrinyasta Rajaduhu, one who has entrusted her kingdom to Mantrini. Mantrini, those who are worshipping Devi by mantras are called Mantrinis. And she has given her entire kingdom to such Mantrinis who devote, who, who say her mantra. Through thought is mantra, effort is the means. Knowledge is the body. Manifestation is a secret of mantra. So, Mantrini is one who recites mantra and Manana Trayate Iti Mantra, mantra which protects him. So, she is the one who protects you. Those who recite mantra is called Mantrini. The next one is Tripureshi, which is the deity. It is a second Avrana. The 16 petal circle is known. Sarvasa Paripuraka Chakra. Sarva Asa Paripuraka. It means Sarva Asa Paripuraka means fulfilling all desires. The presiding form of Lalita in this Avrana is called Tripureshi. The 16, second Avrana. So she is called Tripureshi. Jayatsena. The next one is Jayatsena. Very simple to understand. With victorious army. Because she killed all Bandasura and others. It refers to the conquest. And Sena is her Shaktis. Nistraigunya. Devoid of three qualities. And Para Apara. The last one is 790 today. Superior and inferior. Superior and inferior. Para Apara. Apara. Para means also far off. And Apara is also means who is near. I am far and near. Both. Gita says that Samoham Sarva Bhuteshu Named Vishwesana Priyaha E Bhajanti Tumam Bhaktya Paite Teshu Chapyaham He says I am near as well as far. So there is a uh, uh, there are many such uh, uh, slokams which are given in various scriptures where para and apara are defined in different ways. Para as superior, apara as inferior, para as near, uh, 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 para as far off, and apara as somebody near. And uh, it has meanings that. Para Brahman is also Para Apara. So all these are all part of our Upanishads and also in various, uh, uh, you know, uh, scriptures. So there is uh, also one which is referring to two kinds of knowledge, the higher knowledge and the lower knowledge. That is also Para and Apara. So, these are all described in various Rig Vedas and uh, Yajur Vedas and Sama Veda, Atharan Veda. So there is a twofold meaning in all the scriptures, para and apara, supreme as well as not so supreme. And uh, uh, I'm not going into the details today for want of time, but Devi is described as para, apara and para, para. Also as para, para. So, Varaha Puna says when speaking about three murtis, you know, which is called Parat Para. In fact, there is a song on Parat Para. It's superior and superior. Superior of superior. So, Para Apara, you can take it. That basically it means something which is supreme and something which is inferior. She, she is both. 
and manifestation in different ways for Ahana Prabhu. So today, we are coming to the end of session 15. We have completed up to verse 150 and Nama 70, 790. I think we have covered 41 Namas today. Uh, so I'd like to conclude uh, today's session with the prayer. Sarva Mangala Mangalye Sive Sarvartha Sadike Saranye Trayambake Gauri Nara Janina Mosute Om Chakti Om Chakti Om Parasakti Om Chakti Om Chakti Om Om Chakti Om Chakti Om Parasakti Om Chakti Om Chakti Om Om Chakti Om Chakti Om Parasakti Om Chakti Om Chakti Om Om Chakti Om Chakti Om Parasakti Om Chakti Om Chakti Om Om Chakti Prajava Paripali and Tam Dayana Market of Mahim Mahimsa Go Bram Nepikas for Mustaritium, Doka Samastas, Kino Bavanto Om Cham Tisham Tisham Tihi Mangalam Gurushi Chandra Maulish Verke Shakti Ganapati Shara Dambi Gashankara Charyerke Shakti Ganapati Maha Ganapati Shara Dambi Gake Kala bhai ravake, kali durgai ke, veera dheera shura hanuma, maruti charanati ke, mallikar junaki, chilva janardana ke, ambabhavani kambada ganapati chandi chamundi ke, Sri Krishna Bhagavan ke, Sri Chak Kravasini ke Sita Rama Lakshmana Sakita Maruti Charanati ke Vidyaranyar ke Vidyashankar ke Vagishwar ke Vajradega Garuda Anchaneyar ke Shri Valli Deva Sena Sameta Subramanyar ke Tunga Badrai ke, Shringa Nivasi ni ke, Shringeri Puri yil nilai tirukkum, Engal Shara Dambi gai ke, Satchidananda Shiva, Abhinavan Rasimha Bharati ke, Shri Chandra Shekar Bharati Guru Sarva Baumar ke, Shri Chandra Shekar Bharati Guru Vidya Tirtar Ke Shri Chandra Shekar Bharati Guru Bharati Tirtar Ke Shri Chandra Shekar Bharati Guru Vidu Shekar Bharati Ke Mangalam Guru Shri Chandra Maulishwar Ke Shakti Shakti Ghanapati Sharadambi Shankaracharya Rike Shakti Ghanapati Maha Ghanapati Sharadambi Gaike Shringeri Puri Gil Nirendirikum Engal Sharadambi Gaike Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you again. Until we meet next month. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Om Sri Matri Namaha.